Good morning. It's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And today I want to talk about pressure and how the feeling of I have to instead of I want to creates chronic illness, chronic suffering, chronic pain, chronic disease over time. So a lot of times people who have these conditions, chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic suffering, often feel like they have to do things. So if this is you, I want you to think, do you feel like you have to do the dishes? You have to do the things on your to-do list. You have to take care of your kids. You have to be a good partner to your husband. You have to make your bed. You have to, you know, do all these things you signed up to do, right? So there's all this list of have to, and there's no freedom with have to. It feels like we're living inside a cage. It feels tiring. It feels exhausting. It feels unmotivating, hard to get going, no inspiration, and a lack of joy. So how do all those things contribute to chronic disease? Well, that's easy to see when you have, um, you know, when you're living from, from suffering and pain and just feeling unmotivated, uninspired, feeling no freedom, lack of freedom, um, it causes this over time because what happens in your psyche also happens in your biology over time. So, so let's try to, to look at this in a different way. Good morning. So if that's the way that you feel and that's the way that your life tends to go, like, I can't believe I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. You find yourself saying have to all day long, then you can for sure see the link. And what we need to do is we need to start realizing that we actually don't have to do it, but there's pain if we don't do it, right? So yeah, we don't have to do the dishes, but there's pain if we don't, there's consequences if we don't. And that's where this lack of freedom comes in. We feel trapped by our own life, by our own body, by our own world, right? Because we know we don't have to, but it feels like we have to because there's so much pressure of the consequences on the other side if we don't do it. And we hate the feeling of that, that we do it and build up resentment. We build up frustration, anger, and all these unspoken emotions, and we push them down. Because it's, it's better to feel that than it is the consequences of the pain like that we really don't want to feel if we don't do the thing that we feel like we have to do, right? That's what we're really afraid of, being judged or criticized or um, someone being mad at us or, or being looked at as, as bad or not worthy or somehow, right, judged, criticized, abandoned on the other side if we don't do these things that we say we're going to to do. Okay, so first of all, you don't have to do them. But yes, I understand there's pain on the other side if you don't do them and consequences and a deeper reason why you're doing them. So sometimes we can flip it around and we can say, okay, I don't have to do this. I want to do this. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this because it gives me this, that, the other. Think of the positives of what it's giving you, right? So I want to do the dishes so that I can sit down later and watch TV and feel good about it, or I can have a clean space to, to prep a snack that I want, or, you know, my mother-in-law's coming over and I want it to look clean, and that feeling will be better than the feeling of having it sit there a mess, or whatever it is that you're thinking in your mind. So you want to turn it kind of into a positive, like, well, what am I getting out of this? Why do I actually want to do it? So... Rather than saying, I have to every time, just change it to, I want to. And then ask yourself, is this true? Do I really want to do it? And why? So next time you, you find yourself saying, I have to, like this example is coming out today because I, I have to go appliance shopping and I don't want to. I've been inspired to create this house. I've been inspired to do the design and the drawings and get everything. But now it's coming time to spending the money and I'm feeling a lot of resistance. Um, because our budget's tight. I'm also feeling stressed out, overwhelmed because contractors, other people are asking me to make decisions before I'm ready. And that gives me a feeling of out of control. And so I want it to be what I want and I need the time to think about it. So I'm having to make decisions before I'm ready with money that I don't necessarily have. So I'm feeling overwhelmed by all these decisions that are suddenly flying my way and being asked of me to make 
quicker than I want to make. So instead of a want, I don't feel inspired. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel happy to do these things. It's like, oh my God, I have to do this. So when you find yourself saying, I have to, you stop and you say, just change it. Say, I want to, I want to go appliance shopping. Why is that true? What would I get out of that? Well, if I do, I'll have a decision that's stressful behind me and I can move on with the actual layout of the cupboards and the design in the kitchen, which is what the next step will be. If I don't have the appliances, I won't be able to move on and I'll feel more stress. So, I mean, this is a pretty minor example, but I'm just saying it can overwhelm us, these things, because we feel trapped. We don't sometimes want to do things because for whatever reason, we, we just want to feel free. We don't want to feel trapped or forced upon or made to do something or, you know, uninspired. But if we turn it around and we find ourselves using the word, I want to do this, we can find a reason why it's good for us, why we want to do it. But if we still don't resonate with it and it doesn't feel true and we can't really feel comfortable or get on board with a, a good enough reason on why we actually truly do want to do it, then we know that we should not do it. So when I sit down and think about it, I say, I want to go appliance shopping. Then I can list all the reasons that will help me move forward with my, my cupboards. I'll take some pressure off of me. The contractor might, you know, give me a little room to make the next decision slower if I've made this one quicker. Um, and then you go on and on. You, you think of all these reasons. It'll feel good to actually have, you know, spent the money and to know what it's going to cost instead of just dreading it these kinds of things. Um, so you make, you make that, you consciously choose the reasons why, but if you still can't get on board with it, then you say, you know what? I'm not doing it. It doesn't feel, I can't come up with enough reasons, you know, why? So therefore, uh, I'm not gonna do it and I don't have to. So I'm just gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna enjoy the beach of the day today or at the beach today, I'm gonna look through some more magazines for some inspiration on kitchen layouts and appliances and I'll go in two or three days, right? That literally could be my decision. And yeah, there might be consequences. The contractor might say, you were supposed to decide by Monday. And I'll say, you know what? You'll have to slow it down. And you'll just have to slow it down. I'm sorry, but I just, I can't do it until three days from now or a week from now. Literally, I, I don't have to do it for a month if I don't want to, and the whole project will slow by a month. But just remember, you actually don't have to. But a lot of times there is a reason why you want to underneath it. But change it to I want to because it will make you feel more empowered and it will make you feel less um, trapped. And it will give you a sense of freedom back. And it will give you a sense of life and purpose back when you start to say, I want, instead of I have to. And when you start to consciously choose whether you even want to do it or not, right? And make the choice and realize that there is no have to's. You literally do not have to. So if you can look at it that way, your life comes back to you slightly. Nothing's changed. Just the way you've thought of it, just your perspective, just your realization. And the amount of pressure goes down right? The amount of pressure and this sense of feeling trapped and lack of freedom goes away when you take it back and you say, I want to do this. You find the reasons. If those reasons aren't true, then you actually just don't do it. If they are, then you do it with a sense of, you know, I'm, uh, I want to do this because, and these reasons are powerful enough and that's why I'm doing it. And then you can feel good about doing it rather than dragging and feeling so trapped. So that helps with chronic illness because these feelings bottled up over time add to this pressure and tension in our body that weighs us down, keeps us sick, gives us migraines, gives us pain, gives us suffering, right? It adds to the bucket in a huge way of chronic pain, suffering, and illness. So just remember a lot of this time is just a lot of, a lot of chronic illness is built up over time and we can start to unravel that bit by bit, but you have to be conscious every day. And this is one big way to just change your have to's, change them around, analyze them, figure out whether you really have to, and then just flip it around and figure out why you want to. I hope it's been helpful.